catching up on the stream. I'm also a uh, stream sniping Sargon. <laughs> uh, he's, yeah. Oh, well, it's well, he's just a taste of his own fucking medicine then. Uh, he says he misses you and he wants you to unblock him. Well, he, well, he's done this before and he continued to be a twat. So, <laughs> fuck it, no. Like I don't mind him having a go at me, but just I mean, he was just hassling my Facebook people, and I just thought oh, it's not worth it. Oh, was it? Was he just? Were you, were you yeah, rising just, to it? Like I don't. Yeah, I don't understand him because he was. Um, you think like he's got a big channel and like a family and shit. He's got stuff to do, but he responded to everything I was putting up on Facebook. It was really fucking strange. So, but I, which I didn't mind, but he was then like getting into these big long fucking war of words with people in the comments underneath and it was just hassle sometimes it's too tempting to just shit post like i do it on twitter i end up arguing with people on twitter all the fucking time really because i hadn't noticed or anything that wasn't like <laughs> actually how i spent my fucking evening jesus i was fucking i think it's like um I don't know why it is. There's some people who i, I know for a fact that i'm never going to convince but there's that little part of me that likes to hope and go, maybe maybe if I argue them into a corner, they'll see sense. But, like, nah. nah am, I one of those, am I one of those people? No, you actually come and go. You actually come to the table. Like, you come on live streams and stuff like that. But I've even got a... Uh, I take it you know Pascal LaRue? Yeah, I know Pascal. Well, not very well, but I do know him, yeah. Yeah, he was accusing me. He was sitting yelling at me and about all this stuff where he's like... You did a chat with Steve Bannon and you tried to resurrect Gamergate and you got people to donate so you could make a video game and you didn't deliver on it. And I was like, pa pa Pascal, I'm I'm not Sargon. Well, Sargon I was like, Sargon did all those things. I'm not yeah. Sargon. Yeah, no. You've got I I mean, there's a similar I'm, aesthetic, but I mean I'm much prettier, man. I moisturize. You do, yeah, you, you do. You look like a fucking you look like a leather sofa, mate. Um, <laughs> that's right. and, and the accent should give it away, you would think, with someone, because, I mean... I don't have the smug chuckle down. I don't I don't no. have the, the smuckle. I don't have it down. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and just for anyone watching, so they don't make the same mistake Dankula did off air, I'm, this isn't actually my webcam. You, I'm not lying down like, like I'm a lazy prick. I am actually sat up. I did it as soon, as soon as you connected. I was just like, "Are you in your fucking bed?" Like, <laughs> man, I, just, I, I thought it was the webcam at first. <laughs> I have done a hangout before in my bed. I was so hungover I couldn't be bothered, so I just turned the camera off and just lay there talking vaguely near my microphone. And I was like, "That'll do." I know I noticed. Fuck, fuck I wasn't any less fucking chat. shitty and incoherent. So, fuck, fuck, fuck having political chats with a hangover. Fuck that. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Well, like, we'll move in here. We're talking, we're talking about, after I drop my lighter, we're talking about rights in the state. Yeah. And uh, I think the, the thing that sparked it was uh, the Trump administration were doing something in regards to gender. And uh, apart, I, I got the mostly the gist of it, where it was a case of they're sticking strictly to male and female. I believe they were in expanding well, it to include other genders. Well, no, it's not just, well, it's not just that, because, I mean... Most countries accept male and female, but also accept transgender people as they are. Yeah. Which, I, like, it's not a perfect solution for me, but at least that allows trans people to be who they are. So that's a huge step forward from where it was even 10, 20 years ago. Uh -huh. um, but the Trump administration seems to be, and again, it's uh, a memo from the, the Justice Department. So it, who knows if that actually comes to fruition? Trump might tweet tomorrow a completely different fucking thing. Who knows? But the plan it seems to be that they're going to redefine gender to mean just the genitals you have at birth, which I'm not even going to get into like the, the it's oh it's science thing because it's not about that, is it? It's about like documentation and stuff, which obviously can be um, a very different thing. Um, and so essentially, what they're doing, it seems, is that they're trying to remove what would be basic civil rights from uh, trans people in order to placate their religious base, which is, I think, really fucking shitty and. Um, so, where, 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 is, where is it they wouldn't be able to change their gender? Say, for example, if you've got a male, male to female trans, mm. is this is this just on ID cards, or is it if they ever if it's the Justice Department, is it a case of if they ever go on trial 
It would well, be it's, but it's all, it's, well I mean, obviously the details would have to be um, hammered out in actual um, legal documents and stuff. This is, like I say, this is from a memo that's been leaked or whatever. Uh -huh. um, so in terms of the details, I'm not entirely sure, but it seems that they're going to be doing this in terms of... Um, uh, essentially, you would have to register the child as having a cock or vagina at birth, and uh -huh. that would be all they would be entitled to be, legally speaking. So essentially, it would be to remove trans people as a legal entity. I mean, the people obviously would still exist, but transness wouldn't exist in the legal sense in America anymore. But why would the thing is, why would it need to? That's the thing is, well, I don't see why it would need to. Well, it would need to in the sense that there are certain things that you can't discriminate on, like um, gender, race, ethnicity, religion, you know, whatever. So you can't sack someone just for being gay. You can't deny someone service just for being um, a certain religion, uh -huh. which I think is fair enough. Um, and transness is one of those things because that's obviously a source of some bigotry and it's a basic civil right that I mean, they're not actually doing anything to hurt anyone else so ultimately why well, should they be discriminated against whereas once you remove that legal definition what happens is that you would basically be able to sack trans people for being trans which is fucked up how so though I don't understand like if someone for example even if they're male to female but their ID card says male how would that result in them getting sacked? That's uh... Well, no, the point is, it's not necessarily even a case of bigotry. It might just be the employer looking for an excuse to sack you. Um, and if they sack you on the basis that you're trans and they didn't, well, either they didn't know, which in most cases shouldn't make any difference to the job, um, or they did know and they're now using it as a, against you in some way, that's not, an ex that's not an acceptable reason in order to sack someone or deny them services or deny them... Um, uh, access to, uh, I don't know, like social security or whatever, like uh, uh, social programs and housing and things. Um, and how, how I, I think it's that? fair enough that trans people shouldn't be denied those rights, and that's where it seems to be heading in this regard, which is... I, I don't see how being marked as trans or if you've changed your gender, that would get changed in your ID card, how that would lead you to getting denied these things. That's the... That's the part that I'm not getting. See if it gave me a point. Well, because, if, if, you know, if a memo got leaked, where the Trump administration was saying we are no longer going to, you know, give social programs, housing, and welfare, etc., to trans people, like then, then I would have an issue. Then I would definitely have an issue. But I just don't see how getting your gender marked on a card is going to lead to well, any. No, it's not. Like, I mean, I mean, even setting aside the issue of sort of autonomy and people being who they are for a second, mm -hmm. just look at the legal aspect of this. It's not so much that it's on a piece of paper or on a card, it's whether it's legally accepted. So if you go into either a courtroom or an employment tribunal or something like that, do they accept that you are what you say you are? And if they what, don't, what then you can't be taken into account as a factor. In other words, if you if you go in there and you're, like you say, a male to female um, trans person, mm -hmm. do they accept that you are actually female? But what, what difference would it make? That's, that's well, the because thing. the well, because we know that transgender people suffer a great amount of bigotry based on the fact that people, some people anyway, perceive that they're lying or whatever, or that there's religious bias, and that's not an acceptable reason to to discriminate. But, so, but sometimes you can like I'm not I'm not trying to be mean here, but see with trans people, you can tell. You can you can tell, man, that they're trans. Well, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, but it doesn't actually matter whether you can or you can't as to what legal rights they sh these people should have. Okay, but they are still I, human beings, and if they're facing discrimination unfairly, that's not on. I don't see how this leads to discrimination. As far as I can see, the only thing that this really relates to is recognition by the state, basically. Yeah, but that's if really they, important. That's that's absolutely crucially important. I, I, in terms so. of, I don't, I don't in, see how it is. It just seems to be like validation. It's acceptable. If, if the state doesn't recognise this thing as a thing then arguing that in court does, doesn't change anything. Yeah, but but the, but the thing is as well is the state's not stopping anyone from being trans. Like, even if the state turns around and goes, no, your ID card's going to say male, you were born well, male, yeah, so you're In male. a legal sense, that they are stopping you from being trans. How, how though? All that is is valid. If a court or an employment tribunal doesn't accept you are what you are, then from a legal standpoint, you're not. 
why would they why would they fire you for your gender and why would you need that legal validation why should this why should the state have a say and that you can turn around and go i'm what i say i am i am the master of my own destiny i don't need the state to recognize that like the state no, can no, go you fuck don't it. Need, well like, some people do need that affirmation but it's again it's not even about the affirmation it's not even about the self determination it's about the legal consequences of saying that someone isn't what they they claim to be but the, I don't. I'm not seeing it. Like, see if see well, if someone walks you know, in a, a, you know a people, climate tribunal. You know, trans, you know people. Like, you know people have been fired for being gay, and they've been denied access to services like a wedding cake or whatever for being gay. Right. Well, that's that. That's down to the business. The business can well, no, choose to. But the to point do is, that. there are legal protections. Whether I mean, in in the case in America, obviously they've just recently won that. But there are there are very reasonable i think um restrictions placed on denial of access to certain things based on categories like in the same way that you at least in theory shouldn't be denied because say i don't know you're scottish or whatever right that's because that's not something you choose to be it's not something that's actually hurting anyone else so a reason to discriminate against you it is not and transness falls within that category and by legally defining it a different way the trump administration uh, i'm gonna i'm going to say that i think it's deliberate in order to pander to his religious base but it could be accidental in theory um uh, are removing that p potential for legal action which would be reasonable on the basis that if you were fired for being trans that's fucking wrong and you should have recourse to justice on that matter that won't be possible because the court won't recognize you as trans because legally trans won't exist anymore that's the but problem the, th the thing is just because they don't recognize it on paper does it mean this again? This is just validation by the state. Just because the state doesn't recognise it, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And if a no, company but, starts actually outright firing people for being gay or trans, then under by the under capitalism, you need to cater to the market. And obviously, the way things are going, supporting gay people and trans people is very in right now. It's very very profitable to do such things. Well, and companies so is the, fucking this but, so is the, but so is the opposite. I mean, uh, Chick Fil A did fantastically well out of supporting anti-gay causes. So clearly, there are, there are a certain section of the population which would they, be more they, happy they to support also, a company that sacks someone for being trans. Yeah, there's a portion of the population that are supporting them, but there's also a massive portion of the population who will refuse to eat there. It costs them sales. It costs them well, it sales. Cost them to sales do it. But it, it got them a lot of a big boost because of the uh, huge amount of advertising, and of course, conservatives going, "Oh, I'm going to eat Chick Fil A to trigger the libs or whatever." Right? Um, and the, clearly, therefore, I think would would be companies that would uh, potentially jump on board with that, and that's just not acceptable because trans people are human beings in need of civil com protection. Com companies won't like the figures reflected at Chick Fil A lost sales. Yeah, they get back in by some big people, but like you can have some big guy, you know professing your company to the heavens going oh this company's lovely this company's great there's loads of people that are going to go well they hate gays so fuck them i don't give a shit what you say and pretty much you know the, the left are hardly going to listen to a conservative pundit like going i eat no, chick-fil-a you... the left are going to go well that's nice go fuck yourself goddamn but you're making it seems to me you're making the basic libertarian mistake of thinking that human beings act and behave in a reasonable or logical manner when they I don't know, I, or, they I, act, I, I, or that they act as good faith actors which they don't no that, that's true but it's a case of i and i feel that the average person on the street isn't as dumb as everyone thinks they are which is why i don't go down the whole route of oh these ideas are bad so we should hide these ideas from these people because they're too dumb to figure it out for themselves i've got faith and the population for realizing what ideas are good and what ideas are bad. Obviously, you do get the small minorities on, you know, the left and the right that believe no, in very bad ideas, but the, they are the loudest minority. It's not, well, it's but, not just the bad ideas; it's the way in which they act. Because ultimately, there are there are two poles that actually matter: where you put your X in the box at the ballot box, and where you spend your pound. That's just a fucking fact. That's your your capital, be it financial or um, political. That's where you spend it, and that's what actually matters. Yeah. And you've seen time after time that people will happily support companies they know to be fucked up. Like, I mean, the oil companies. Is there a single person in the world who believes the oil companies are good companies? No, no, but, this, but this is the problem, is that what, what, what other ones are there? Well, like, exactly. Uh, the point is, if they acted like, you know... Oh, good good christian fucking samaritan soldiers and all this bollocks about you know ethical consumers it's under capitalism ethical consumerism is a fucking farce people go with what's cheapest and most easily available it doesn't matter if they've been sacking gay people or trans people or 
fucking destroying the ozone layer or whatever. People go with what's easy and cheap. That is true. Commodity like commodity can <laughs> trump your morals. Well, That's exactly, true. which is why which is why people who get caught up in that, like a trans person who gets fired or denied a service on the basis that they're trans because the person's a bigot or just looking for an excuse to sack you, um, that they need civil protections. And this plan from Trump seems to be aimed at removing those civil protections. I'm not seeing how it's removing the protections if it's just recognition. I think, see, if it's... it's no, it's it's legal record. It's not just recognition like it's a bit of paper that says you're a man or a woman. It's when you go into a courtroom, what rights do you have? When you go into an employment tribunal, what rights do you have? Well, then you're being sacked based on gender or the, the way you dress. For example, I mean, like, say, for example, if someone's male or female trans, you know, one week he's Steve and then slowly but surely he starts turning up to the office and dresses and all that type of stuff. And then he's like, ah, you know, my name, my name's Stephanie now. Like that, see if they sacked him at that point, that would be a dress code violation and that's fucking stupid. Like you need to wear the clothes that are appropriate for your gender. That would be protected, man. That would be, unless it was PPE Right, but I mean, that's, like that's, that. that's a very that. specific example. We're talking about, there are a myriad of different things and unless... And I doubt the Trump administration will do this unless they specifically say, that, you know, at, the, at any of those circumstances. In, I doubt they're going to write that into law because that's quite complicated to do. Mm-hmm. So I, I doubt you seem to be, again, you seem to have much more faith in the Trump administration's want to protect the rights of those their well, based if, spies. If, if, I, see, if I see them actually infringing on rights, then I will be vocal. Like the Trump, like. I'm happy we got Trump. Have. In so many other ways, they already have, man. Don't in what, talk. In what ways? And what what rights have they taken Trump away? Trump has called. Trump has called for, um, and not just called for, but is, the plan is now in action to remove the rights of of the American people to protest outside the White House. I've That's not seen. Fucked. I've not seen anything about that. Okay, I will have to dig out the link yeah. for you and your fine viewers um, to, to look at a, a, a later date. If, if, if that is true, then I am extremely against that. The right, the right yeah. to protest should be available to everyone. So I don't know. I'm just going to... I mean, that's one of the things that that yeah. about, about um, the way in which Britain does its thing, is that no one seems to care that you need permission to protest outside Parliament. That's disgusting to me. No, we, 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 we managed to get it for fucking day for freedom. I was fucking quite shocked by oh, that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, the police, <laughs> but the police can put restrictions on all of that, can't they? They can say you can only do it for so long or you can only have so many people. They can even yeah. write down to the fact that they can stipulate the size of placards you can use for your fucking banners and stuff. I didn't know that part. I know one thing that they did, which which I, I do understand, was we had day for freedom and then Antifa and so on wanted to do their counter protest and the police intervened to basically you know, create this gigantic no man's land between mm. us to basically go, you know, you can protest here, you can protest here, none that's of you are allowed to cross this area. And that's when I was like, yeah, because punches would get thrown. So yeah, I get I get that. I understand oh, that. So that's something that I'm fine with. But actually on on that note, you mean you mentioned you bring up the day of freedom there. Something that um occurred to me. I saw a tweet you sent out the other day about Nicola Sturgeon, who for those who don't know is the Scottish first minister. Um, Chair, Chair, Chairman Sturgeon, as we call it up here. Chairman Sturgeon, yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> who is a formidable character for such a small person, but anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, she uh, uh, she refused. She's, she was going to go to a BBC thing uh, that uh, Steve Bannon's been invited to, but she's now pulled out saying she doesn't want to associate with him, which I mean, I've got no fucking problem with. She can do what she wants. But you were saying that you were really upset with her because she's 4D platforming and stuff. Yeah, she she, she basically she, she requested for Bannon to be removed. She basically went, "I will only appear if he's removed from the panel." The BBC oh, that's, I mean, that's to right. That's uh, but ultimately, if they then decide not to, she can pull out. That's not a problem. She look not, as first minister. She hasn't said he's not allowed in or something. But it was the thing is, she, she but, sort of suggested, like, say for example, if it was like me, you know, I was about to appear on some panel show, and like Christy Winters was there, and I went. I'm not. I'm not appearing on a stage with her. Like either she gets dropped from the panel, or I'm not turning up. Like that's me sort of trying to use my sway and use my pool to get Christy deplatformed. Like that. That that would be what I was doing, and that's what Nicola was trying to do. It. Oh, okay, but okay. I, yeah, I, I can see the point. Yeah, she was clearly trying to put um, some amount of pressure onto them, and I'm not even saying she's not pro deplatforming because she may well be in a number of different ways. Yeah. But my point, I couldn't. 
in connection to your the day for freedom, I couldn't help but notice the at least chink of hypocrisy here that you spoke at the day for freedom, which was a deplatformed event. If you, I don't know if you're aware of the story of Ali Dawa, who was due to speak at that event. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm very, I'm very aware. I was, I was there when shit went down. Like yeah. I've, I spoke to Tommy about that. I told Tommy, Fuck but you up still that. spoke at the event. You still took part in a deplatformed event, knowing it was a deplatformed event. No, I, all I knew was Ali Dawa turned up. Ali Dawa was came inside for a second. Ali Dawa went outside. There was a massive fight. And this is the, the way the way I understood it is Ali Dawa did in part instigate it because I seen him walk up to the DFLA and shout, I'm prepared to die in the name of Islam. And that's when I went, right? You don't was, you don't you mate, don't walk up. Was, no, mate, did I, 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 no, no, that was that was Ali Dawa. I witnessed it. Oh, I was really? there, I seen it. Yeah. Well that's odd because he's a streak of piss. The other bloke was fucking ripped. Um, uh, he's, a, yeah, he's exactly. a cage fighter. <laughs> he's a, he, he, even even though even though he had about like thirty punches rained down on his head, he was fine. Mm. After it, I was I was fucking impressed. Yeah, but, uh, but like uh, but like at uh, that situation, it wasn't until like later on that night that I found out exactly what happened because I was getting I was asking everyone going like what happened, and I was getting like six different stories because nobody really knew what happened. What we seen was. He turned up, he came inside for a second, he went back out, he walked up to the DFLA guys and it all kicked off. That was the and then the police grabbed him and dragged him away. Like the police just grabbed Ali that one, pulled him away. And after that point, I was like, Where's Ali? Does anybody know? Like nobody none of us knew what actually happened. Okay, but you would disavow that deep platforming. Yes, I would. Yeah. Okay. I spoke I, I spoke I spoke to Tommy about it and went like that. That was that was a fuck up. Like that was a fuck up. Like, and especially like the DFLA doing that, they shouldn't have done that. Yeah, they shouldn't have done that. Like, I, I, don't, I don't want, I don't want violence at any event. I don't care who's doing it. If it's right or left, I, I don't give a shit. I don't, I don't want violence happening at any kind of event like that. That's fair enough. Although I think it's it's worth noting, regardless of what you think of the people's vote uh, as a concept, the fact that they got hundreds of thousands in the streets of London and it mm-hmm. didn't kick off, did it? No, it didn't, and that's good. Like, I yeah. don't, I don't agree with what they're campaigning for. But see, the fact that there was no violence, good, good protest. Mm. That's. Yeah. I wish, I wish protests ended up more like that. Oh, man, even if it's even if it's shit that I don't agree with, like I don't want it like erupting into violence. So if people turned up, they did the protest, you know, they made their voices heard, and then they went home. That's that's fine. I want, I want protests to be like that, but you know. Unfortunately, fucking shit gets far too heated now, and people there are people that turn up to protests like, and this this is right and left, and they've got no intention of I'm going there to you know say my piece and have discussions about politics and stuff. People are going there, going I'm going to crack a few skulls like that's yeah. There are people that go there specifically for that, and that's not just Antifa. You know, there's right wing groups that are starting to do that themselves too. And uh, basically, any anybody that has a, a plan of doing that when they go to events, they can fuck off. Like they, they all can fuck off. Like because the thing that I'm most worried about is see how, like you said yourself, the police have a bit of sway and control over protests. You know, you need to get a permit. You can only do it for so long. Blah blah blah. I think that the violence that happens at such protests, the police will use that as a justification for taking that right away. Which is worrying because I don't, the right to protest, you know, it's pretty fucking sacred. If I'm being honest, like I don't care who it is, I don't care if it's people I don't agree with. The right to protest is pretty fucking sacred, and like the police are using a lot of stuff now as justification for taking rights away. So I'm worried that if the violence continues, you know, on either side, then the police will use that as justification for removing that right, and that that's something that I'm keeping an eye on because that's worrying me. See as soon as I see as soon as I, I'm waiting, I'm just waiting for an MP to bring it up. I'm just waiting for an MP to put forward legislation like banning protests. I'm I'm waiting for it. I'm just waiting for that happening. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think I would have trouble getting that through the comments, but that's I mean, um, yeah. As your UKIP's spokesperson for shit posting or whatever, um, <laughs> and I saw you. St- I mean, you were in town. You didn't invite me along. Fucking hell. But you, are you, are you, do you live in Birmingham? I do, mate, yeah. Dude, dude I, I legit would have brought you out for a drink. I'm being <laughs> serious. I, I, didn't, I didn't know you were there. Oh, you yeah. could have you could have hung out with all the UKIP guys and all that, yeah, man. Like, I, 
I can only imagine my, my invite got lost in the post. I should be on <laughs> the phone with the Royal Mail. Oh, by, um, by the way, dude, we didn't even hang out, but then we went out and did our own thing. <laughs> man, I was just, I was, I, was, I got to the point where I was like, that, that's enough politics for the day, man. I'm just, I just want to go out and get. Well, you don't. That's the thing. Regardless of the the politics involved in it, you don't. A man with, I mean, just the fact that you've got piercings in your fucking face means that you're not UKIP like standard territory there because they're pretty no. stuffy bastards. Well, that's, that's the thing is as well, as I've even told him, I was like, I, I believe Scotland should be independent and fucking, oh, the silence in the room. What the <laughs> so, that's, yeah. you, you've joined a party called the United Kingdom Independence Party and you want to break up the United Kingdom. I do I do want an independent Scotland, just not under Sturgeon. So basically it's the whole, you know, you've seen you've seen the meme with the two muscly arms shaking hands, so it's basically Count Dankula, UKIP, hating the SNP. <laughs> Like that, yeah. that type anti, of shit. You're an anti-union unionist. That's genius. That's Correct. amazing. Playing under underwater 4D chess confirmed. That is, yeah, that is, <laughs> is yeah, that's 4D fucking backgammon. That's like, yeah. It's just um, there are there is stuff that we have in common. There are ideals that they have that I'm quite happy to assist them in fighting for. Okay, um, well, let's. I think that's an interesting point to get into the the idea of rights in the state. Then, what ideas that UKIP have? That you agree with control and immigration right because the way things are going our job market economy and housing especially in fucking scotland can't keep up can't keep up with it and like scotland keep complaining like this is i bring this up all the time scotland keep complaining about uh oh we don't we don't get all the immigrants you know uh, england's getting all the workforce and all that type of stuff why don't we get it here and it's like because there's no fucking jobs here there's no yeah. fucking houses here. Like I know, I know immigrants that have came here. They've been given a council flat in fucking Postle Park, of all places, and they're on benefits. And they basically are scrounging fucking immigrants, scrounging fucking immigrant, and the immigrants like give, give me a fucking job then. Like, well, where are all the fucking jobs? <laughs> so like, that's, so, like they that's the interesting one. Honestly, it's yeah. Schrodinger's immigrant, both simultaneously stealing all the benefits and taking all the jobs, which is a fascinating <laughs> juxtaposition. Um. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you want to control immigration? How would you yeah. go about that then? What I would do now. This is this is the thing that I have a problem with, right? And I've I've spoken to people on the alt right about this as well, and I have a solution that can make everyone happy. It can actually I, make everyone well, happy. I, yeah. Okay. I, I mean, this is going to be epic. Go on. Yeah, it would be a case of what we're doing right now is essentially reverse colonialism, where instead of going over there and taking, you know, just taking all the shit. We're instead dangling the carrot and getting it to come to us. Skilled labour, skilled people, you know, people with uni degrees and all that type of stuff as well, you know. The the type of people that that country, you know, the third world country fucking needs because, you know, skilled workforce and intelligent minds is what builds a nation. But what we're doing is basically leeching all of that from that country, throwing it further and further into poverty. But we look like the good guys doing it because, oh, no, we're... We are helping these these poor people, these poor refugees. No, we're not. We're fucking bleeding them dry of the resources. It's like, well, you've helped these a hundred highly skilled workers that you've let in. What? What? Wouldn't the country back home that has thousands and thousands of people still there? Wouldn't they be able to benefit from this skilled workforce? Nah, fuck them. Right. That's that's the problem I have because the amount of people that like see how all the MPs and all the you know the big rich capitalists that you hate so much, they're the people that fucking benefit so much from immigration, man. Mass immigration, hell yeah! Give us that cheap workforce okay. that are prepared to do eighty-hour weeks for fucking minimum wage. Okay, like, cause, yeah, like that's. But my my plan would be to encourage companies to establish themselves in third world countries. Now, this is the, this is the, where we have the problem. This is where it would be seen as you know we filthy white westerners interfering. Third world countries are rife with corruption, very bad corruption, bribery, bribery, underhanded shit. For example, Africa's leaders are selling out their soul to China. China mm. is raping Africa right now for all of its resources. Basically, give give some rich cunt the government a fat payout and China can make like a hundred times that back on all the leeway that it's been given. China knows this and the guy in the government doesn't give a fuck because he got a nice fat payout. Oh, my people could use those resources? Nah, fuck them. I don't care. I'm rich. Uh, right. Okay, we're getting slightly sidetracked. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I went, right, I so went so in that tangent. But... All right, so but what, what is your solution to help everybody or that would be okay for everybody with these skilled immigrant people? It would be 
for us to rid the third world of its corruption, get the third world to adopt a Western model and basically make the third world a thing of the past, use capitalism to actually elevate them out of poverty. Like, that's, that is my is that, overall plan. But okay, basically, well, you see of... Botswana. Look at Botswana and Zimbabwe, right? Zimbabwe adopted the socialism model. Zimbabwe's a shithole. Zimbabwe's a shithole, right? Used to be Rhodesia, right? But Rhodesia will always exist in here. But Zimbabwe is an absolute shithole. Now, Botswana, close by, fully went capitalist, fully went the Western model, and it is essentially first world, right? Botswana is leading the fucking way in Africa. See, if you okay. look at their capital cities, you would, you couldn't tell it apart from a Western country. They are doing very, very fucking well because they adopted that model. See if we can just get all if, the third world countries... If capitalism, yeah. if capitalism was this miracle cure for everything, why hasn't it been? Because of the restrictions that people place on third world countries. Or you can't mine coal, you can't do pollution, you can't do, you know, carbon, carbon, pollution, pollution, climate change and all that type of stuff as well. Now, climate change is an issue... But you should look at the way it fucking China has just basically went, no, go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Sanctions, yeah, nice try. Fuck off. That's what China's doing. And Africa, they abide by this fucking shit because they rely so much on the first world that basically if, uh, sanctions from the first world could fucking ruin them even more. And basically the first world has the power to put these sanctions on them for things like climate change. I think we should just let them fucking, just let them build, let them do their shit. Like, basically, see how what we had to do, you know, during the industrial era, poll pollution and all this type of stuff was fucking rife. But we yeah. we did that shit, and we got through it, and then became what we are today. We are, not, we are now using these sanctions to not let third world countries do that. We're literally holding them in the past. We're, well, we're, we're not letting anything, them develop. Do you think it has anything to do with the crippling loan stipulations from people like the World Bank? Uber capitalist fucking... Scumbags. The world, the world Bank, did you just say that, Kev? I did say the World Bank, yeah. Rubbing, rubbing, rubbing hands intensifies. Is that, was that what you just said? I did, yes. And I'm not referring <laughs> to it in the way that a lot of your fans might. With their... <laughs> not, not my fans, no. We just say it as jokes. <laughs> slightly um, <clears throat> anti-Semitic comments and all of that. Um, <laughs> especially because the um, you get institutions like the uh, IMF and all of that who place incredibly horrific restrictions on on these countries and keep them in permanent fucking debt. Yeah. That's well that's not socialism. It's well, got nothing to do with fucking coal well, that, mining. That, like. that is that is one thing though. Capitalism I'm saying is a good thing, but capitalism itself does need to be controlled. You know, I don't want to say have you ever played Middle's Edge or you know Deus Ex? No. no. Right. It's a, it's basically a case of, you know, it's almost it's basically capitalism almost did this sort of weird take of globalism where the nation state and borders just stopped existing and corporations almost became countries themselves like top proper and cap you know you weren't a scotsman or an englishman you whatever company you worked for that was your nationality that's like you know that's when you go full and cap like corporations could have armies and go to war like that yeah. type of shit so i don't i don't want it to end up like that although recreational nukes would be funny uh, what, what do you mean I can't own child slaves? Isn't yeah. this America? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that type of shit. But the capitalism well, needs control to make sure it doesn't it doesn't get to that point. But this, well, that's interesting because you mentioned you mentioned them taking over the nation state, but capitalism and the nation state came about basically at the same time for the same reason. They're they're no, post they're, feudal, they're post nation, feudal institutions, basically. I, I, no, the nation the nation state. Well, when I say nation state, I usually think you know. A set border with its own, you know, central rule and you know laws and so well, on. So basically, I, I would say the nation state has existed okay, since well, you know, feudal like, times. Like, like I least. don't want to be, I don't want to be Mister Semantics here, but fuck, I'm going there. I'm going to be a nerd. That's technically just a nation rather than a nation state. But okay, okay, okay. No, that's fine. Okay, no, right, no, fair no, enough. Yeah. Fair enough. So like, but the thing is, like, capitalism is what ended feudalism. Basically, you know. Merchants became well, that, a lot more powerful than richer than the lords. Yeah. Like, that, that, and that's yeah, that's would, just the way it went. Yeah, well, I, I, it wasn't that it ended. It was it was like a transition, basically. It wasn't that yeah. one thing came along and and it was it was people want wanting more economic freedom and more, more mobility, and you get a burgeoning middle class, and that essentially yeah. blows away the old feudal order and all that. Yeah, like the the. the, the Lord, lords and stuff like that still exist, but it's just a 
some you know it's a nice little symbolic throwback sort of well, sort of is, deal like this this is a point actually we were arguing about although I yeah. fuck if I can remember how we got onto the topic but of <laughs> the royal family and the fact that we're not actually a secular state technically here in Britain I just I don't see secular basically means that the religion has no say in the nation states laws I don't know but it does how how it does. Though, like that's the thing is like I, I will admit you know was it homosexuality in Britain was illegal up until the 60s yeah 1964 five something like that yeah something like yeah. that so that that law was that was clearly religion that was clearly christian based that law and i'm glad i'm glad that law got to fuck right to get rid of it but it's like i don't know what other religious doctrines are in the laws of this country that would make us you know non-secular like that's well, the, like not- saudi arabia is an extraordinarily non-secular well, country obviously we're not yeah we're not religious to the extent of saudi arabia yeah. and and it might, it might even seem technical because I mean we're we're officially far less secular than America, but in actuality far more secular than America, if that so, makes sense. Because well, they, they, their religious right have a lot of sway in politics in a way that ours doesn't. But we do have, I mean, for instance, our head of state is also the head of the Church of England, which is the official state religion for staff, and she has to sign off the laws. Now, okay, that's like a piece of paper, basically. In theory, she could refuse to, but she doesn't. But there are also like 30 odd fucking clergy of the Church of England who sit in the Lords voting on laws. And just on the, are just because they're fucking bishops. Not because they have any expertise or any fucking democratic mandate to sit there, but yet they're fucking there. I was just, the thing is, I don't, there's no religious doctrine that has place in law apart from. Right, obviously, thou shalt not kill, murder's illegal, right? But, you know, I'm pretty sure we would have arrived at that conclusion without religion, that murder right. is a bad thing. Yes. You know, don't, don't, don't need an old text to tell us that. But like, well, that's fascinating. I, I can't remember who did it, the, the, the breakdown of the Ten Commandments and what how many of them are actually in US law. And it's basically two. That's under and one or two others under very strict circumstances. Like if you lie to a police officer, technically that's illegal, but lying itself isn't illegal, type thing. So yeah, yeah but I'm not. I'm not suggesting that in practice we actually are that religious because we're not. Because no fucker goes to church. Um, I go to church. You go to church. You bollocks. <laughs> yeah, I, I, try, I tried. Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was thinking, oh, I don't know, because you were talking earlier about Orange Men and stuff, and I thought, well, maybe on the sly he is. I don't fucking know. No, um, no, no, no. I'm Catholic, Catholic background. I was, uh, I was the only, I was one of the very few Catholics that went to a non-denominational school. So yeah, I've been, I've been called a Fenian once or twice. Ah, oh, right. That'd be good. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. Well, as, 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 as a man who's walked around in a Celtic shirt once or twice, I've been called it myself. Um, yeah. <laughs> that will happen. <laughs> um, what was going? Oh, I was going to fucking say, yeah, and I, and I was a Catholic um, altar server, which is nice. And brilliantly, I didn't get raped, which is nice because that's that can't be said of all people, young people who are involved in the Catholic Church. Yeah, that can't that can't be. Yeah, uh, that's that's the thing. As I thought, see, see, the reason we focus so much on the grooming gangs right now is because we thought all of that fucking stuff calmed down. And then what was it? What was the big thing that just happened in America? It was meant to be. 136. Oh, yeah, in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking we, well, we thought that, we thought that, that that's, down. <laughs> that's my problem with that's my problem with the likes of Tommy, actually. It's not that he's pointing out things that I don't want to be pointed out. Because mm. if anyone's raping anyone, I want it pointed out and I want justice to be fucking done. Yeah. The point is, he only ever really seems to focus when it's brown people doing it. Like the fact that he's never really addressed the fact that there are loads of EDL members who've been done for nonce in. He has a. There's only there's only been as far as I know there's only been one, and it was. Oh a guy. no no, there have been loads, mate. I'll have again. I'll have to. I'll have to get the link. But there there have been loads. I'm talking well, like twenty odd. There was only there was only one that I heard of. But the reason there is a reason that Tommy focuses on it, and it's because the with the Asian grooming gangs, and it's because his cousin was a victim of one. That's why he has such a, a beanie's bonnet about it, because mm. it was his cousin. So, like, that's why... See see if he was just doing it, you know, just because... Because fuck him, like, that's why... Then I'd, then I'd probably raise an eyebrow, but see the fact that he has a member of his family that he's close to that was specifically a victim of Asian grooming gangs, that's how I'm kind of like, right, okay, then I, I understand why you have this focus. Like, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure if it was the Catholic Church that did it to his cousin, then Tommy would have fucking blew up about that. 
I think well, it's perhaps, uh, yeah. perhaps so, but I mean, um, are you going to London tomorrow for his? Is it tomorrow his court date? No, no, I, I, it's tomorrow, but I'm not. I'm not going to be down there. No, don't feel like. Don't feel like getting punched. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you feel like you're going to get punched? Oh, I get it in the street now and again, man. Like uh, fucking, I was at the anti-Trump rally. And the funny thing is, I was there by accident, like fucking, I was in with a uh, tailed feature and we were walking through and we seen an event starting and we were like, oh, I wonder what this is. He went and bought, he went and bought guitar stuff. I bought Magic the Gathering cards and then we were walking back through George Square and I looked around and I was like, oh, fuck, this is an anti-Trump rally. And I was like, I'm in the belly of the fucking beast here. And then as we were walking through, I get recognised. Guy surrounded me and they were like threatening to hit me. One of them threatened to fucking, uh, he said if I brought my dog with me, he would hop the dog. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, but this is the thing that was quite funny. Like, even though him and he said that, all these wee Antifa friends were even looking at him and like, what the fuck, man? Like, yeah, like that's... yeah we're, we're not going to hurt a dog. Like, <laughs> like I, it was, I could see in their eyes they were looking at him like, why did you say that? Yeah, that's <laughs> like, really, that's dense. Yeah. Fuck's sake. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't turn around and go, oh, Antifa will threaten a heart, like, innocent animals like it was just this one guy that said it and i could tell by the expressions on everybody's faces that they were really <laughs> unhappy they were really unhappy that he said that well but you know yeah. you know you must have overstepped a certain boundary when you're in a group of of people whose cause or to a certain extent is their cause is like violence and they turn to you and go dave calm the fuck down chap we don't. yeah <laughs> oh, they, they were still they were still threatening to hit me and all that stuff. You know, yeah. none of them had any issue with that. Like they didn't do anything though. Like I've I've noticed well, with them. Yeah. Something bizarre all about that because when you were saying they were threatening to hit you, I wasn't mm. really. I'll be honest, I wasn't moved. But when they said they'll hurt the dog, I was like, oh fucking hell! Whoa! <laughs> yeah, like fucking. That's, that's like it's that's like in movies. You, 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 in movies you like cheer and stuff like that when people die, but as soon as like a dog gets hurt, that's when everyone's like, fuck this movie, fuck this director. <laughs> man, like why why would you hurt the dog? That man <laughs> fucking John Wick. <laughs> man, but yeah. Like I've I've had it before. Like the, the thing is, like me personally, I'm not too worried about it. It's just it's my girlfriend that I'm both fiance now. I'm I'm worried about her. You know, it's hard that I'm worried about. So, see, whenever I'm out in the, whenever I'm out walking in the street, like I'm just blase. I don't really care. But whenever I'm out in the street, like with her, I'm quite alert, and I get people walking up to me and all that. And like most, of, like every single time, it's been someone that just wants to meet me. But whenever I'm with my girlfriend and people walk towards me, I'm immediately like ready to like I'm fucking. If you go near her, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> like fucking type <laughs> of shit, man. So it's quite. I get, I get, I've got quite a bag of nerves yeah, whenever I'm in the street with her. That's, that's that's understandable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what was what else was the the UKIP? Uh, we we got onto him. We uh, let's say we covered immigration. So what else? What else do UKIP have that you support? The other thing is as well is mainly British culture. They're basically saying that Britain should remain Britain in regards to the British values. The reason you Britain, want Britain to remain Britain, you dozy bastard. You just said you want Scotland to leave. You know what? I'm not in the values part. In the values part, the reason that Britain is a good place to live is because we have British values, and it's basically British values as they are quite liberal. You know, we are very you know live and let live. We're very polite. Well, maybe well, maybe, maybe, to, maybe no, no. <laughs> just, I'm sorry. As, as, is this, are you offended at being called polite? <laughs> no, I well, I, well, I personally, I mean, yeah, but there's, there's <laughs> I've been to Glasgow. It's not the most. <laughs> in the world. It's because you were English. That's why. Go well, home. We're very possible, yeah. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> even so, it's not. I don't. Uh, are we that polite, really? I, don't I think know. that's I true. Think it's, in, Gla in Glasgow, like one one thing about. I, I keep professing, you know, like no no violence over political opinions, no violence over political opinions. But like one thing I will say is I've I've gotten in a lot of fights in the past because it's it's a very Scottish thing because we were we were having a discussion about this where I know a lot of people where if they get into a fist fight with their friend, just that that's it, the friendship is over. There's no coming back from that point. And um, we were all the Scots, we were all kind of bewildered by it, and we're like, no. Like we've we've like fought and punched each other before, and then afterwards you just shake hands and keep drinking. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's well, what I think. It's, like, we, yeah, we, we, we my, yeah, my Irish roads, but I, that's that seems very familiar to me too. 
Yeah, That's like me, me and another Scottish guy, when we went to the, we, we were supposed to be doing this week in Stupid Live in Scarborough, but fucking stand up to racism got shut down. But we all went anyway. And me and another Scottish guy were going to fight. And like, we were just, we were just going to fight because we had a little bit of a disagreement. We were just going to, you know, throw some punches and hash it out. And we had people from Canada, from Israel, from America and all that. And they were all in the middle going like, well, well you're, you're not going to fight. You're not going to fight. And all the, all the Scottish guys were like, just leave them, let them fight. So there was a bit of a cultural divide. <laughs> Like that. <laughs> it is, they, in that in that respect, America, and obviously it's not universal, but I've noticed that Americans do have that more standoffish attitude to things. Yeah, yeah, Americans. I, I don't know. It's like I'm Americans not, are quite prideful. I have noticed, especially Texans. Like if you if you talk shit oh, about I, Texas, yeah, yeah, Texans annoy me because I hate that kind of prof, not professional, but that kind of overly. Re- regionalist thing that you get like people will say oh i'm from texas or in, in britain you have people like oh i'm from essex or something as if i don't give a fuck where you're from you cunt like it's not it's like it's not really the biggest deal in the world to me where someone's particularly from like that doesn't bother me and it, it annoys me when people go like as if the people of texas have like some innate quality that makes them better or it, it just annoys me I, th- I think it, i think it's just having pride in where you're from like a lot of like if you speak to a lot of migrants they're really not proud of where they're from they're not mm. happy with the place and it's just i feel quite proud of scotland i'm not proud of the direction that it is going in but like with, with the amount of migrant like one of my one of my friends like he was born in zimbabwe that? he fled yeah. his mom and dad fled because of mugabe and like yeah. he I don't know. He like he he likes Scotland. He likes living here. But see, if you ask him about Zimbabwe, he's get he's get nothing but contempt for the country. Even though it's not really the country that did it to him, it was the Mugabe regime that did it to him. But he he just thinks he's like, ah, fuck Zimbabwe. It's a fucking shithole. Fuck it. I hate it and all that yeah. type of stuff. Like he's not, he's not afraid in it. You say you're proud of being from Scotland, but you didn't have any role in that, did you? Well, that's no. not something. That's not something you've done with yourself. You just but, happened to have popped but, out in a certain place. But it's my job to perpetuate it. Well, that's fine. Like I'm, yeah. I'm no, like I'm not. I mean, I'm not a nationalist by any means, but I understand that kind of one one nationism, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Thing. That's not. A, I don't particularly like or dislike that. It's just something that happens and will continue to happen. It's not. It's not mm-hmm. going anywhere. But to say that you're pride, you're proud that you feel pride. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Like you can be proud of uh, like the culture in a in a sense because that's something you have contributed to in your own weird pug way. Um, <laughs> you have you have contributed to that, um, and that you are a part of that. It's a, like a living organism in of itself. But to be say you're proud of Scotland as a whole seems like a really odd. Like I've never quite understood that. Patri- well, no, I'm not. It's not even patriotism. That kind of nationalism, really. I think it's just wanting your country to achieve and do great things. Like one thing that obviously, you know, freedom of speech in Scotland's pretty shit. So I'm I'm doing my part to see if I can fix it. I'm just one guy. I probably won't succeed because I'm just one guy. But see if I can get enough people on board with the free speech bandwagon. You know, if we get enough voices behind it, then maybe it can change. Like a lot of the people that watch us are quite young people. These are the people who, in future, are going to replace all the fucking boomers. You know, like so what what we ideally want is people that support free speech, support freedom. You know, support minimizing government influence a hell of a lot. And hopefully, when they take over, that will fix things. What's okay, the what's, well, the, what's, what's the whole cycle thing? What is it? Easy times create complacent men. Complacent men create hard times. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. And it's just like this, it never, and then good times create p- complacent men. It's like this never-ending cycle that we've seen all the way through civilization. Okay, but I mean, the, you mentioned there about government influence on free speech. Mm-hmm. What what do you think's wrong with the current setup? I mean, I don't know specifically about Scotland, but let's talk more generally. It's what mostly, do you think is wrong with the setup with freedom of speech as it is now? As the fact is, if someone turns around and like this is, if you see if you look at the hate crime operational guidance handbook. One of the things right now as well is all that matters is the victim's perception of what you did. So, like, let's say, for example, if me and you are walking down the street and we accidentally, you know, like bang into each other and you'd say that I'm a gay guy and you bang, you, you know, bang me and me and you turn around and go, watch where you're fucking going. 
And so I'm banging, often... I'm banging a gay guy, right? Go on, go on. <laughs> um, so like you bang into me, and you, all you say is, "Watch where you're fucking going," and walk away. You know, you didn't call me a faggot or a poof or anything like that. You didn't say anything like that. You just turned around and gave me a bit of jip and walked away. Now, if I just say that, I if I just feel that you did that because I'm gay, that's enough for an arrest. And then the police even say that they don't need to prove that what you did came from a place of hatred or bigotry. All that matters is my perception and also the police's perception of the event. That's all that matters and that's enough for an arrest. And I just don't think that crimes against, you know, gays or trans or anything like that should have any special, you know, like extra punishment added on because see things like that, that just honestly increases hatred between the groups because see the primary root of racism and bigotry is victimhood. How come they're getting what I'm not getting? How come they get that special treatment but no, I don't, I don't, special I don't treatment. know that. that's the root of it. That's where it comes I from. I don't know that that's necessarily um necessarily true in terms of the root of where that bigotry comes from. But just on a on a practical level with um you uh, creating specific types of crimes is that if you notice a specific um route through which crime takes place in a way that it wouldn't like like you say the gay guy could suffer exactly the same crime as a straight guy but can also be um victim of a crime based on their sexuality in a way that a straight i mean a straight person in theory could have a heterophobic crime against them but i mean that's not really a thing there's whereas a, a homophobic crimes are actual fucking things yeah so there's a term to, for to create it, a specific law makes yeah. sense based on the fact that you have specific groups of people targeted for specific reasons there is a this is the thing is individuals have rights groups don't have rights groups should not get special preferential treatment like for example like that's, right, right, that's right, right, right now i'd say that's a really odd thing for a nationalist to say that groups of people don't have rights because you're literally but, saying the people yeah, born on this strip of land individuals have should rights. have more rights than people from outside of that strip of land. No, individuals. Have, no, this is the thing. Is my goal, like, see if I could, my goal is a codified British constitution. See if I could apply a constitution to the entire fucking world. Like, I'm sure they would love, I'm pretty sure North Korea would love that very much. Right? So, like, it's a case of, like, the way it works is, see the constitution that we are, you know, discussing. The best thing about it is, see things like, race, gender, ethnicity, whether or not you're trans, that's not even fucking mentioned in it, man. Are you human? And you have these rights, the exact same rights well, as yes, yes and No, I mean, for instance, there are certain, I mean, they, they may be seen as arcane and may have been, may be struck down if they're ever tried to be enforced. But for instance, uh, neither you or I as either former or whatever, I don't know what you're, are you an atheist now? I don't know. I don't really comment on stuff like that. Okay, well, let's just say yeah. a former or possibly active Catholic, we couldn't become head of state. Yes, we could. No, we couldn't. You can't. You, you, if you're a member of the royal family, in order to gain assent, you have to become the head of the Church of England. And are they? Would that ever be okay for a Catholic to become the head of the Church of England? That would be really. That would be a constitutional. Right. I, well, that's the that's that's the same as like me saying like, oh, am I? I'm never going to be the Grand Ayatollah because I'm Catholic. Like that's part of the religious institution. It's the same as I'm not going to be part of the royal family either unless I marry into it. Like, well, exactly. That's, that's, just, that, 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 that's that's an and archaic system. That is. And obviously, me yes. and me, and you aren't ever going to get anywhere near it because I mean we're ugly bastards, so we're not going to land a princess. So that's not going to happen. <laughs> no, no offense to your good lady at all. That's that's not um, a comment on that at all. Um, but. <laughs> In theory, it should be open. The head of state position should be open to whoever, and it isn't. It's open to well, it, it, Protestants. It's, pr it's pr pr prime minister. Prime minister is open to anyone. Yeah, that is open to anyone. Yes. Yeah, that is, and yeah. that's the one that has but the that's sway. Not head of state. That's not and head of state. It has a lot more power than the queen. Oh no, I'm not saying it doesn't yeah. have more power than the Queen, but the point isn't that the Queen is powerless. She has a meeting every week. The Prime Minister has to go from his, well, her now, house to the Queen's fucking house and answer questions from the Queen every fucking week. Now, that's, yeah. not, a, that's not a person who has no political influence, and yet it's not based on anything other than the fact that she came out of the right set of balls and ovaries. Do you, think, do, you, no, do you think the Queen... The Queen herself wants mass immigration. 
Do you think Prince Philip wants fucking mass immigration? Do you think he wants any of this? Probably I mean, not, but they're not really a thing. Given some not. of the things that Prince Philip said, I think he probably <laughs> might not be happy. No, I'm guessing immigration. they're probably not enormously happy about it, but it doesn't actually affect them. Like they don't see these people. They don't. They're not affected because they don't need a job because they don't fucking do anything. Yeah, but their existence thrives on this country's economy because it's where their money comes from. Yeah, but the economy is going okay. That's that's all they'd care about. As long as it's going okay, that they they're cushy. Yeah, for for now. Yeah, but they're ninety odd. Do you think they're fucking looking decades into the future? They don't give a fuck about that. I'm just I'm just saying, man. Like people. Well, if you're a good person, then you try and take care of the future for your offspring. You know, that's that's even mm. human nature. Almost, you try and protect your offspring and make sure, like, I'm, I want to make sure that well, my kids go up in a well, free society. Well, I pay through my taxes to protect her fucking offspring. I, you know what I mean? I, I'm going to just... Spoken gonna, like a true Catholic. Sorry, frankly. But even so, <laughs> but with, within your constitution, then, would you keep it as, as it is? Would you have an unelected upper chamber of parliament and monarchy? The royal family would, uh, even though you know, as a as a Scot, us and the royal family haven't, you know, gotten on the best. Then I feel they have a right to exist. If the Queen tried to dissolve Parliament and stuff like that, and then basically the actual true head of state position that has all the power is now closed off to the common man, then yes, I would have an issue with that. I absolutely would. I don't want full monarchical rule, you know, right, because. But that's well, not well, what we have. I'm, I'm, I'm arguing. Are you in favour of maintaining the status quo under your plan for like a, an actual written right. constitution? Right. The queen. The, the queen doesn't have as much power as you think she has. Yes, she has political sway, but then again, so do loads of other pundits. Apparently, there's people out there that think I have political sway. Obviously, not as much as the fucking queen. Right. I don't. I don't no. believe I have political sway. <clears throat> but. Like, the Supreme Minister position is the one that I'm interested in. See if that is open to anyone who wishes to join and, like, take part, and they can be voted in by the public. If that's protected, then I'm fine. If the Queen tried to do anything to that, then I would have a problem. Then I would have a problem, definitely. Okay, but, okay, but, that, I mean, you're, you're almost bizarrely giving your politician's answer there. Because, you, you, essentially, you are in favour of the status quo. The status quo. If the queen wants to exist, the queen can exist. If she wants to have political no, answers, she can. She like, I mean, no, like, no, no. <laughs> no. I'm not going full French Revolution on this. I mean, like <laughs> in terms of her having that role as head of state. I'm fine with that. I know the head of state role, like the term head of state, sounds extraordinarily high and mighty, but it doesn't have all the power that you think. It no, does. it doesn't have all the power that. I mean, clearly, like I mean, yeah. she's the actual head of state, and the prime minister is the de facto head of state. Right, that's fine. That's, but, symbol, that's symbolic. That's all symbolic. The Prime Minister is the one with the real power. No, that's even, I, mean, I, th I think. I think even if the Queen tried to dissolve Parliament right now, she wouldn't be able to. No, I don't think she. I think there is actually a, um, a, a a clause in one of the Parliament Acts where if the Queen tried to, if the Queen was well, something along the lines, and again, I'm not a constitutional expert, but I believe there is a clause that if a majority was in the Commons and the Queen denied the royal assent to a bill, then the mm -hmm. Commons could remove her from her position, I believe. Well that means that that means our powers in check. Yeah. Like exactly. no 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 one person should have that. I do believe that you know it should be democracy, it should be people discussing stuff as well. But this is the thing is I I believe that people should be working together as well. Like see for example, I personally feel we're going to the next Prime Minister it's going to be Jeremy Corbyn. I've got a personal feel it's going to be Jeremy Corbyn. Which kind of means that Relations with Israel are going to go down the fucking toilet. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but see, I'm not one thing that I am definitely not going to fucking do. You say that, but I mean, I, 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 that's a somewhat cheap shot at the fact that you think he's an anti Semite. But no, I don't know. Being, being against Israel doesn't make you an anti Semite. No, but that's clearly what you're referring to. Don't again, rather politicians answer there. He does, like, he doesn't he doesn't like Israel. You can't deny no, that he like Israel. I'm not a massive fan of Israel, but that's yeah. I'm just I'm just saying. Thrown at him are that he's an anti semite. That's I never, that. I never said that. I never said that. No, but members of his own fucking party have, and members of the opposition, and indeed the fucking Home Secretary has called him an anti semite. So I mean, that's clearly um, 
what you're poking at. That's the nature of it. I, I didn't see it. The Tories literally voted with one of the only parties in the European Parliament to vote for Viktor Orban. And everyone else was calling him anti Semite. So, in practice, if Jeremy Corbyn's made one or two stupid comments, I would argue that backing up an actual anti Semite is worse. I know, but it's just like the, th the thing is, as well, with fucking Corbyn, is he did kind of lay some wreaths on the graves of Hamas terrorists. And he's also Maybe. endorsed people like Fidel Castro. He did. Well, there's, there's a, just Fidel there's Castro, no, yes. But the denied, actual... he denied the wreath thing, and then photos came out of him holding the fucking wreaths. Like, right. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, he's done some dumb shit. I'm, and I don't. I mean, I think, I think no, the but, but, could do better. No, but, 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 that, but that's the, but that's but the thing. That... Is, even if Corbyn did get in, the point I was going to make is I'm not going to do what the Democrats are doing to Trump. Like, if Corbyn does shit that I agree with, then I will praise him. If he does shit I don't agree with, then I'm not going to I'm not gonna do stuff like what fucking they're doing to Trump where, oh, Corbyn had two scoops of ice cream while everybody only had one. That doesn't sound very communist, comrade Corbyn. I'm not going to do dumb shit like that. Like, it's a case of even if Scotland got independence and Nicola Sturgeon came into fucking power, I w all, all I would do is I don't agree with her being in power. I wouldn't agree with Jeremy being in power, but... As they are the democratically voted in leader of this country, I then need to support them because instead of attacking them at every turn, I should be using my sway to try and make them the best leader that they can be for everyone. That's what people should be doing with Trump. Like, because I, I, I'll tell you, like, I know you think Trump is a fanny. There are times when I think Trump is a fanny, right? And I'm like, he shouldn't have done that. He could do that better. But see, instead of everybody screeching, everyone should be given the gentle, you know, civil guiding hand but it's just anger directs anger, politics anger, far too much you can't you can't ask everyone else to be civil to trump when even people he's paid to fuck he calls horse face like there's no civility in the man i know there's, i just thought, I thought that was funny like I'm, i'll, I'll no, admit like, what you th whether you think it was funny or not it wasn't <laughs> statesmanlike. it wasn't civil i think that dude, that's is, why people not, like him he has not tried he has not tried to govern on behalf of all americans that's the problem well, the thing, the thing is, he has done some stuff. Like, for example, black unemployment's very low, right? Well, not very low, but I, ideally, I would like employment to be zero. But black unemployment is you rising. You fucking socialist! You fucking socialist scum! Wow! Well, right. I, I even, I even get, I even get called a socialist because I support the NHS as well. I feel, even though, right, my reason for that is, I feel the state should exist to protect your rights. Your right to life is probably your most fucking important one. So I think the state having a system in place to, you know, preserve your right to life is the state doing what it's supposed to do. But I get called again, a socialist for that. Again, that's odd that you're a member of UKIP because they they've certainly pushed and hinted strongly that they would want to privatise the NHS. No, they want to develop it. They want to, they want to pour more money into the NHS. They they want okay, well, they, okay, well, they, one, one, one of the things one of one of the things that's fucking the NHS right now is the massive amount of migrants. Basically, the population is ever increasing. The NHS isn't good. I'm being serious. And do you want no, do you want to, do you want to know the majority of people that work in the NHS as well? well For foreign nurses and doctors. Exactly. Pretty, yes. Pretty, exactly. Pretty, the pretty, NHS would. I'm pretty the sure NHS would collapse on, without migration. No, no, it's the. <laughs> Is the fact is they work for less. It's all done in contracts. It's all done in contracts. A UK-based doctor would go, I want 160k. Whereas, you know, some foreign doctor that's working in a shithole, 60k, I'm going to be a millionaire and they come over here. And I don't blame them for doing it, man. You can either stay in a shithole country with really, really bad infrastructure, like really, really bad crime, and earn 15k for being a doctor. Or you could go to Britain and earn fucking five times that amount. I also right, do, I, I, I don't blame them for I don't blame them for leaving. Call me a politically correct cock if you wish. But I don't <laughs> think that Britain, given its child rape issues and stuff, can really be calling other nations shitholes right now. Like that doesn't feel right at the moment. I'm pretty sure Pakistan's leading the world in child rape. No, no, I'm not suggesting that we're not better than some other countries in certain ways. Mm -hmm. But the idea that we can sit on our high horse and call other places shitholes. Yeah, but, I, but we, because we, we are so, so, so much better than so many other countries, man. Like, we have a high even, standard even, of living. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Yeah. Russia likes to consider itself a first world country, but we, you know, we don't. No, it's not. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's fundamentally not. not. 
No, nah, like, especially, you know, being gay in Russia isn't it? Especially being gay in fucking Chechnya isn't exactly a great a great thing right well, now. But the thing yeah, is... Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the bizarre thing with people. Certain, I mean, I'm, I'm not you necessarily, but people on, like, the alt-light or alt-right who are, like, quite fond of Putin in one breath, but yet will criticise Islam because it's anti-gay on the other. And you think... Well, how does that match up? Yeah, he's not throwing gay uh, people off roofs. I'm, I'm not a fan. He's of still Putin. a homophobe. No, I'm not. He's I'm not a fan of Putin in any aspect. And, so, and, so, and, and of course, thing, and that what he does to reporters, reporters that criticise him go fucking messy. Well, exactly. Yeah, the yeah. people who support, who claim to support free speech and like you know uh, being able to express yourselves and stuff, seem unmoved by the fact that dozens of reporters have mysteriously died or political yeah. opponents that end up in jail for trumped up bullshit. Yeah. Well, the man's a fucking despot. Yeah, I don't like him. I'm not. I'm not a fan of Putin. No, he's he's no, gro- he's grotesquely anti-freedom. Like yeah. the thing is, pe- people say shit about me, like, and I'm like, yeah, let them let them fucking say it. I mean, even Glenner was Glenner. You know, he's a famous fucking comedy writer. He's probably world famous. Well, can, I, was, like, I, can I just? Uh, I just want to correct one mistake you made in that video, and I'm going to say it's a mistake rather than a lie because I think it's. I think you were being genuine. He wasn't just given the police caution for misgendering somebody. That wasn't the issue. It was transphobic it was, harassment. It was that exactly was, transphobic yeah. harassment because he found out the ducks of not just the person but their their parents, I believe, and yeah. issued that. I mean, that, so regardless of whether you think doxing is worth a police caution or not, that's clearly far more serious than just. I, th- I think see Trump see Trump. sharing sharing information that isn't supposed to be in the public knowledge, then yeah, I, I think the police should get involved yeah. in that. Like say for say for example, if you like your Facebook is private strictly to just you. If someone hacked your Facebook and just dumped all of your messages online, then yeah, I would say the police should get involved in that. Yeah, because that's that's, that's 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 information that was not public. Someone had to, you know, break into your account to get that information. So, yeah, the police should get involved in that. If that information wasn't public, then, yeah, I, I, I would believe the cops should get involved in that, especially if it was done maliciously. We we yeah. actually had a big chat about doxing, but there's things where... It's a, see how loads of people were arguing whether or not doxing is the gathering of information or if it's the actual posting of the information, but I think it all comes down to intent more than anything like see for example like say right now let's say that you are really really depressed you know you were depressed as fuck and then you just basically went i'm going to kill myself bye boys and then you just disconnected from this chat you know everyone would freak out and then everyone would and the chat would be like that holy shit find his address we know he's in birmingham call the police like get the cops around his house that's ethical doxing as we call it but see if you're releasing someone's private information with the hope that someone in the public will do harm to mm. them. Like, say, for example, if Antifa posted my address, you you know why Antifa posted my address. Yeah. They, they wanted harm to come to me. Like, so, like, well, it's, it's, the whole docs and things messy. I've, I've had that. I mean, I had a hand-delivered, hand-written death threat posted through my front fucking door. Like, I know that people want to see me menaced. And I'm not even on the same level as you. I mean, you've got, like, international headlines and stuff. Like... Clearly, you're more high profile than that, and it is about intent. Clearly, because ga- just the gathering of it can be intent if you intend a either to pass that on or b yeah. to menace someone in private. Because I've had people come to me and say, "Unless you do X or Y, or if you don't take down that video, I'm going to release your ducks." And here they are. That's menacing. Yeah, that's clearly that's menace. That's that's uh, trying to uh, black blackmail. Yeah, basically, but was it? As, as blackmail, essentially, you know, do do what we want, or we'll do this to you. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that in any aspect. Like, I even, even if, like, for example, if your address made it into my Discord and someone did something like, oh, let, let's order a pizza at his house, like, I would, I would even go no, because like the, the way I draw the line is, you know, I'll fling shit at you in Twitter, I'll fling shit at you in YouTube, but see how your actual real world, like your life, that is strictly off limits. Mm. That's strictly yeah. off limits, though. So, like, see, see if you're doing an event, like, I might go up to the microphone and troll you with a question, and all that, like, you know, how how big's your dick, Kevin, or some bullshit like that, right? That's that's fine. But see how your personal home, like, to people like us, that's off limits. We wouldn't yeah. do stuff like that. But there are, you know, well, there are people that will go even as far as to send you a fucking handwritten death letter. 
Yeah, that's so, pretty fucked. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, whilst we're on the topic, how do you feel about the um, Sargon versus Metacore supposed Doxapalooza shit? <sighs> Yes. I don't. The thing is, I've just been sort of tuning in and out, so there's right. information that I don't know. Like people were like, someone, someone went on oh, medical streaming, and I went on it for five minutes, and I just sort of went, I've, I've no idea what's getting spoken about here because I'm, I, I was out the loop for a while. So obviously things have developed since then, and all that. It's just, I just, I just want it to stop. Really, like I fucking see, see, just. It just feels like East Enders now, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, I, was, I was watching it, and I, like you say, I don't know the full details or anything, because, I mean, frankly, it's too fucking boring to keep up with, but I was watch, I was listening to him and Sargon sniping back and forth, and I thought, these are grown-ups, are they? Really? This, these are adults. This is how they talk. Come on, God. I mean, really, you've got nothing more productive to do with yourselves. I think it's because it's... We see with Jim, it's what, it's what he does. Yeah. That is what he does. Like the reason, the reason that I've never like butted heads with Jim is, Jim, Jim makes fun of stuff. He makes fun of stuff, and I'm, that's why I'm just sort of like, well, whatever. He's ma- he's making fun of stuff. That's fine. And I've, I think I've had a chat. I actually spoke to Jim about this before. See, because Jim doesn't actually try and inter- like we were saying earlier. Jim doesn't actually try and interfere IRL mm. with someone. Is why I don't have a problem. He's, he's doing that right now with the Carol the Wolf guy, but there's very good reason for that is because they believe that Carol the Wolf has committed some serious crimes. Like, oh, they, oh. I, I don't know if you're aware of the whole situation. No. There was basically leaked DMs of him sexually abusing puppies. Oh, jeez. And shit like that. So basically, oh. so basically, yeah. So basically, people are investigating his real life right now. Like, apparently, I, I, someone told me this, someone spoke about it in the Discord. Apparently, there was a video going around on the fucking deep web or some kind of shit like that of a guy abusing a puppy, and apparently, the background in the video matched the garage that's also been in Kero's videos. Mm. And so people are sort of trying to think it was him. So see how that type of shit, where Medical is interfering IRL with that guy, well, yes, he's committed some very serious crimes. So that if that if that results in the guy getting arrested, investigated, and if he's done something, punished, like that justifiable. That that is justifiable. Like he's committed a serious, horrible crime. Yeah. So that's, that, yeah, that, that's, that, yeah. That that's that's different. But see how all he does is to, to like me personally, like all he's done is like make fun of stuff. Like that's that's fine. Like that's you know, freedom of speech and all that has, as well. If, it has been it's been fun watching him rip into Sargon about his Applebee's whiter thing. That's fun. That's <laughs> this is this is the thing is I know I know Sargon's my friend my friend and all that man. Like he is like I do I do care about him a lot, but I can't help but use the same roasts against them. <laughs> and all that. Like it's just that I'm, like you know, we'll be sitting in the chat and all this type of stuff and I'll just go, you know, depends on the child and all that <laughs> type of shit, man. But like he t- he takes it well. well. At least at least for me, he takes it well. Well, that's yeah. I mean, we, yeah. I've got a thing with a friend of mine where they'll say something. If you disagree, you just go. You do, you're just saying that because you don't even own a suit. You don't even talking about. It. You don't own a suit. Yeah. Brilliant, fucking brilliant. It's anyway, just yeah. it's just sort of like shit flinging. Like I'm just staying out of it because like I've sort of see because like my goals, the constitution and all that type of stuff as well. I'm sort of I kind of have a job to do. Like shit flinging can be fun. But the only problem is, you know, if you fling shit, you're bound to get some on you. Mm. And all that. Well, and it's basically, like, the, the drama seems never ending. So if you know, if you take one step in, it seems like you're, you're in it forever. And I just, I just can't be bothered with that. Well, I, I just, say, I, was, yeah. I was not surprised, but I, I have to give you some credit because you did turn up to the UKIP conference. Yeah. None of your other shitlord friends that joined did, did they? Or no, no, the, no, there was a bunch. Ones. Uh, Sar- Sargon was already pre-booked, mm. like b- before we even joined UKIP, and that was uh, the Richard Carrier yeah. debate. So yeah. Sargon didn't want to back out of that. Uh, Paul, Paul, I've I've no idea what happened. Paul, I've, Paul was locked in the in his basement by his mom. Yeah, okay, go on. <laughs> I, I, I've no idea. I never I never even asked him why it is he didn't go. Um, so I, I turned up. Um, but there was a lot where, of where was Milo? What, what's what happened to Milo, the great Milo? I've I've not heard a peep out of him. Like I heard, I heard he joined, 
and then just yeah. that was it. Um, <laughs> well, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't heard anything about him. Um, I haven't even spoken to him in a while either. But yeah, like fucking, I, I turned up. I gave a speech. You did. You so, did. Uh, yeah, but there was a, there was someone. I don't I don't know if this is true, but I hope it is. There was someone that wrote an article about it uh but apparently there was obviously like lots of reporters in the crowd like filming and covering the event and stuff like that and apparently when i walked out on stage this really old guy that was a ukip member sitting next to the reporter apparently went oh god it's him <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if that's true but fuck me i hope it is man <laughs> i oh. really hope that's true <laughs> Well, I do, like, imagine you walking into a room full of UKIP members and they're just staring at you like you're a piece from a fucking zoo or something. Just like, what is this creature? I don't know. I don't know much well. I, by the way, I, I swear to God, see, because my name's Count Dankula, I, the, I, there was people there that thought I was a legit count. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And one, one, woman, one woman, I thought she was making a joke, right? But she was being serious and she was like, I'm not actually sure how I greet an aristocrat. <laughs> Man, I was kind of like, what? <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? Like, that was that was quite funny. <laughs> well, I imagine as soon as as soon as the voice comes out, they're like, "Hang on, I think I might have misjudged this situation." <laughs> oh no, that was that was the thing is as well. Like everyone saw, like uh, you know, the people see my videos and see the way I act. But see, when I was at UKIP, I was sort of like, "Right, this is political. This is a chance to get a good message across." Like the same way Day for Freedom. Like, see if I'm doing a live event like with Sargon and stuff like that. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be more Count Dankula and less Marcus Meekin, right? So like, yeah. that, but see how the UKIP thing was a serious thing. Day for Freedom was a serious thing. I was sort of like, okay, you know, go very, very minor on the jokes, but you know, proper, properly promote the political message you want to get across. Whereas if it's another kind of event, then it will just be all jokes and yeah. all that type of stuff. So that's why I was like, you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not, I'm not going to act like a wanker here. Like I'm actually going to do what I want to do, type of stuff. So like that's why I took I took you kept seriously. I took Day for Freedom seriously. Basically, you know, stay fuck off, leave us alone, let us let us be free. You know that that's just pretty much the overall message. My my overall message is pretty much you know fuck off government. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, well that's that again. A slightly interesting take for a nationalist, it seems to me. No, but, the, the, the state should exist in some aspect, but it just shouldn't yeah. be anywhere near as powerful as it is. Like, I mean, you want it to be more powerful in certain ways, though. You want it to have like a stronger border, yeah, security like, or whatever. Like, I don't want immigration shut down. I don't want it shut down, but like, I just think we have a moral duty to actually help third world countries develop instead of just taking all their shit you do, like, you do. Yeah. But, I mean, this, is the, this is the problem you're going to run into with the, your plan is if if what government and what set of people what nation are going to say okay this let's say i don't know a company ford want to open a car factory somewhere if they if they offer to come to britain but we say no actually go to mozambique whatever right mm -hmm. to help them out what government's going to do that what government's going to turn down ten thousand jobs what set of people are going to turn down 10,000 jobs? That's true, which is why there does need to be an intervention. But exactly. Then it'll, but then, but then it will just be seen as we, we whiteies messing with the well, natives again. Like that's, yeah, that's what it will get seen as. But your concept of like the ethical consumer thing, again, people are governed by self interest. They don't really give two fucks about people elsewhere. True. Just look at boycott, divest sanctions. You know, that fucking failed. Mm. as well but, yeah i mean if, if if ethical consumerism could have solved the problem it would have but it hasn't i think it's just a case of you know capitalism is good but it can make people abandon their morals to an extent you know you've seen you've seen the movies you know by the stereotype heartless businessmen like we'll just dump We'll just dump the pollution straight into the river, like you know, like that type of shit. You know, it does. People start thinking more about money and less about ethics, and all that so as well. I mean, like, you're, you're seeing it with Google. You're seeing it. We see how Google are quite lefty and everything as well. They're is all, it, well, yeah. is it good Sorry. or is it just powerful? What do you mean? Well, is you you said it's good 
to a certain extent. But is that just because people in general and prosperity come out of it because it's so powerful? It's such a big force. Because, for instance, I dare say most of the people of the third world don't think it's a good thing. Because they get fucked over by it. Well, this is the thing is like a lot of them don't really have capitalism. A lot of them, you know, basically, you know, their their commander in chief has all the power, has all the fucking money, you know, what he says goes. I mean, it, the only the only time they really get change is when another fucking group pick up some AK forty sevens and overthrow the bastard and then they, they turn out to be the exact same type of people. Like well, it's not capitalism, but I mean capitalists seem more than happy to do business with people like that. But this is the thing is uh, a lot of them do it but they are you know africa get the short end of the stick you know yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll give you absolute buttons like you know if you give us all of this and all of this we should be we should be see how things like establishing mines and stuff like that there as well we like i think it should be a case of a chunk of the money should go back into the country and the workers should be paid a living wage like yeah. I always thought, I always thought about like the Russian model. Now, this is the thing: is it's something I've explored. That I am not an expert in this, but Russia used to do this thing where you've heard about all the ghost cities that there are in Russia. Yeah. Like ba- you know, basically, if there was a mine or a forest, you know, <clears throat> things that needed done, Russia would just build a city. They would just go, you know, here's houses, supermarkets, blah blah blah, all this stuff, you know. Working the, it was basically this is where all the miners and foresters lived like, in America as well, yeah, yeah. But like it was sort of abandoned because it was seen as a waste. China do it an awful lot as well. Yeah. But see if they did something like that in Africa, but instead of just basically here's a gigantic city, all, all the resources gone, let's just leave it to fucking rot. Then I think establishing the city at first based on the resources, but then basing factories in that city basically the resources are just the foundation you know this is just the start but then place factories and all that stuff in the city and let it grow and develop from there i'm not an expert i'm probably talking complete fucking shit right now well, i'm just well, i'm just spitballing an idea i'm not gonna go that far because i'm not an expert either but like i say i think it just it comes back to there's going to be no western government like can you see Donald Trump saying, no, please, Mercedes, don't come and build a factory here. Go and build it in Ghana. Like, that's True. not going to happen. It's, it's and you don't even have to be an economic nationalist. Like, uh, the French, God, wasn't it? Macron isn't an, an economic nationalist as such, but he wouldn't do the same either because it's good for their economy to have those jobs there. I mean, it's, and, the, same, it's the same thing as well. You know, if you're, it just depends on the type of person that you are. Like, if someone, you know, if you're rich as fuck and a guy comes up to you and you're you're sitting next to a homeless guy and a guy's offering you a hundred pounds, there are some people that would just take it for themselves instead of going, No, give it give it to that guy over there. There are there are people that would do that. And unfortunately, capitalism, despite being good, capitalism breeds such people. Which I, I do I do own up to it. I don't, think, I don't think you can justify it as being good. It's just powerful. And some of that's good, and a lot of it's fucked up. Yeah. And capitalism, I don't think, can offer the answers that places like Africa need. That's I the thing is, what, they can. what else can be done, though? Because, like, obvi- obviously... Well, I don't know. I'm not an expert yeah. by any yeah. stretch of the imagination. But if capitalism... Again, if capitalism could have solved these problems, it should have done by now. It's been around 200 there's, fucking years. Yeah, there's not been, you know, African com- countries, you know, they aren't at the point where capitalism can achieve its full potential. You know, you're lucky... You know, even even stores or just little huts and stuff like that, like big business is what creates it. And if an economy is really, really weak and the people are impoverished, then, you know, big corp- corporations are what fucking pioneered capitalism. You know, you've got gigantic companies, gigantic factories, all that type of stuff. You know, there isn't there isn't a foundation for that in a lot of African or third world countries like for, for such a thing to happen. But even in places where there is, like, I mean, uh, Nigeria has a huge amount of oil wealth. And Western companies and Nigerian companies, through corruption and various other things, but they're still big capitalist corporations, like you say, who've kick started capitalism and all of this, have stolen all of the wealth, and the, the average people of Nigeria are still dirt poor. Yeah. But I so again, clearly, that's... capitalism is not the answer then, because 
but what, what could what, there, what, doing its thing is, and fucking the poorest there, you know? Yeah, but they're, 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 the opposite alternatives are socialism and communism. They don't fucking work, no, man. I'm sure there, there must be other fucking... I mean, really, is it beyond... Like, we've created wealth in parts of the world. I don't see why that wealth can't be... Or not necessarily that wealth, but its own, its own version of that can't be created elsewhere as well. I don't see why living is that capitalism, um, capitalism was successful uh, compared to feudalism. But surely, for humanity to actually progress, we need to be progress beyond capitalism to something better. Well, obviously, I would like you know if there's something that is a better option for everyone than capitalism, then I would be happy to move on to that. Like I think dec decisions should be made that would result in the greatest good. That's the type of decisions that we should be making. Now, the answer is definitely not socialism and communism. That's been demonstrated. You know, luckily, luckily we haven't been the victim of that. But you know, we've seen that those are not the answer. Like, you mean by by socialism? Because to a lot of way, Americans, we are socialist, and they are uh, fucking wrong. But yeah, it's it's a it's a description that gets used. I've heard I've heard bizarre people like fucking Stefan Mullen. You describe America as socialist. It's ridiculous. I don't remember him saying that, but yeah, America, America is not fucking socialist. No, no, <laughs> but obviously not. No, it's the leading anti-socialist force in the world. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, like if if, if a better system comes up, then you know, I would I would well, want to move on to it. Like if there's a postcard, everybody. What was it? I, I just said answers on a postcard, and then realised that made me sound so fucking old. <laughs> Like, well, that's like obviously like conversations about shit like that need to fucking happen. Like I've even said as well that like obviously you get people from like you know the alt right and the far left and all that as well. Like there has to be some sort of middle ground for everybody. Like not everyone. Like I, I understand that as my politics go, I'm not going to be able to just solely get my way. I'm not going to be ignorant to the point where I'm like, yes, I am so well versed in politics. If I if I was in charge and all politics were my way, the world would be perfect. Like, no, like, I'm, I, I am going to have to compromise. Like, see if there's something that I don't want. I will need to say, I don't want this to happen, but I, I understand that for well, us to have a middle ground that I need to compromise here. Well, people are, people think, are willing to compromise. Well, this is why I think the, the, um, the days of the kind of uber capitalism, the kind of global com corporations are going to come to an end within the next 50 years to 100 years because once the boomers go who are the main fucking driving force behind all that bollocks younger people have been fucked over by the system and it's young people around the world that are you look at unemployment rates it's always vastly um, larger amongst younger people and younger people can't even get on the property ladder in rich western nations now yeah um, so there's no investment in keeping that system in place so eventually once those boomers die out and the voting block becomes gen x millennial types i think you'll start to see governments have to cl clamp down on that because it's not serving the interests of the people but this but this is the thing as well is like see, have a look at silicon valley a lot of the people there are quite young a lot of them are very very left wing and they're acting exactly and doing doing the exact same shit as the boomers were doing just with different politics they're doing the exact same stuff that they used to do like look at look at google google's very very far left Right, they are like it's, it's obvious at this point. Well, but what they're doing is they've, they've, they've far been... left when you're allowed on their platforms or something. Like that doesn't make that's not congruent. It seems to me. No, but um, this but, but this is the thing as well. Is now see Google have always been we are so anti censorship. I've seen you. You obviously seen the good censor document that yeah. came out. That was a bit yeah. fucking frightening. But like uh, Google, I. I am, I, I've fallen out with Google, not for the whole, you know, censorship sort of thing here. Google initially refused to be in China because of China's extreme censorship. Yeah. China has extreme censorship. And what happens is Google have instead looked into their pockets and decided to make a yeah. censored search engine for China. And that's what's maybe when you sacrifice your morals for a paycheck. That's fucked yeah, up. Exactly, yeah. you, should, you should be turning into China and going, you can go fuck yourself. Because one thing about capitalism as well is denying business can be a good way to influence behaviour. If that behaviour is bad, like the fact is there's a lot of people here as well as the free market companies, you know, they can decide to do what they want in that regard, like up to an extent.
But see, and this one, this decision, if the Google went, no, China, fuck you, we're not making your product, your pro censorship, that's, that's a moral good. It's, well, exactly, but morality and capitalism, it seems to me, are rather divorced from one another, because as I, you've just I, said... I, agree. I would agree with that. But there well, are... Then, if they're divorced from morality, how are they good? Because hashtag not all. <laughs> hashtag, <laughs> if it wasn't Google, some other company would have stepped in and done it. That's, and that's the and thing is, they would have, they, they they would have had frankly, to... Frankly, they don't give yeah. a fuck that the Chinese people are being brutally repressed. Yeah. So capitalism, once again, is not serving the people. But that's the, thing, the Chinese it, government. It has done us very well so far, right? I, it, it does have its problems. I, I absolutely acknowledge it. Absolutely does have its problems, and it seems that people are just more focused on greed more than anything, which is, you know, sadly, it's an inbuilt human trait. Which obviously so why have a system that why why create a system which incentivizes and rewards greed? But if you do another system, right? How can the people are going to need to be in charge of that system? How do you know they're not going to be greedy? I mean, look oh, at look at. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you that greed is is like an innate part of humanity, just on the basis that we're still animals and the will to strive and survive is there, and so hoarding things and you know can be a useful strategy in that regard. Yeah. So greed is there, but it needs to be at the very least disincentivized. Yeah. I'm not saying, look, I'm not one of these people who's like, we need to create a new Soviet man. Look, I don't think that's going to fucking, that's not a realistic <laughs> or healthy approach. Um, but disincentivizing awful behavior is probably a better, a better solution than rewarding it. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a case of some people like don't ca really care if they look like a piece of shit as long as, you know, their pockets get lined. Like, I have, like, there are, there absolutely are people out there that are like that. Like, yeah. it really, really, really is. But like, it's a case of what what can be done. Because if you try and, I'm I'm all for like, for example, anti monopolization laws. Basically, yeah. like, an oil company can't just basically take over and go. We now control the world's oil. You know, yeah. we we run the fucking show now. I'm absolutely fine with that. You know, there've been laws against that, like you know, Silicon Valley controlling you know the world's world's you know. Discourse is a, another thing that's sort of similar to that as well, which is why that's what, an area that I'm looking into. The old media being basically most the media in the world is controlled by six companies. That's not yeah, good. that that's isn't healthy. No. But that's the thing is there is alternative media is growing a lot right now. But they, this is this is the thing is like see how people say, oh the old media is dying, old media is being destroyed. I don't think it should be destroyed. Like let's say for example, you know you've got let's 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 do a fucking amazing example. CNN versus Alex Jones, right? <laughs> See, CF. Yeah, pipe of you, definitely. No, but that's that's the thing is like Alex Jones. I know a lot of people don't like him. I think he's phenomenally entertaining, and I actually think he's a nice guy. You probably disagree, but let's say that CNN <laughs> get absolutely destroyed. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think a man. I think a man who leads harassment campaigns against the recently bereaved fucking parents of dead children. Yeah, I think he's a cunt. So he, he, he never told them to do that. People did that of their own accord. Oh, People have agency. God. But uh, let's, let's say CNN got absolutely destroyed, and Alex Jones then became the top news source. I wouldn't agree with that. I would go, no, there has to be selection. There has to be a lot of stuff. So see. Alex Jones isn't any news. Source. No, I know. I was just using him as a. I was just using him as a funny <laughs> example. Like, but but see, for example, like the old media, you know, you've got the Guardian, Daily Record, the Sun, and all that type of stuff as well. Everybody goes, oh, they're going to be destroyed. They're going to be destroyed. You know, new new media is rising and all that stuff as well. Like, I don't want old media to be destroyed. I want there to be so many multiple sources of all kinds of information of all kinds of political opinions and persuasions and all this type of stuff as well because see the main thing that basically rises overall intelligence is access to so much information and this is why i have an issue with like you know you've got fascists and communists who actually want to control freedom of speech right now the problem is if you restrict what information that people can access and you only make them follow one doctrine then people are only getting one kind of information and learning to think one kind of way, which means that their mind isn't really expanding and broadening, right? Mm. Which means that, which basically means that overall, you know, as time goes on, we will get intellectual stagnation. You know, our intelligence will peak. Yeah. But, but we're not going to get beyond that point. And you know, in, in the next few hundred years, I'm quite frankly, I would like us to be, you know, exploring the stars. I would, I would like that to happen. 
right? But so that's why it's important that, and the problem with it as well is, you know, if you have all this information out there, yes, some people are going to be convinced to be communist, some people are going to be convinced to be Nazi, some people are going to be this, some are going to be that. But see, because overall that does cause a greater good with everyone becoming more intelligent and with intelligence comes prosperity. You know, intelligence also brought us nukes, but you know, let's let, let's just forget about that part, yeah. right? <laughs> but like, as, that's why I feel like if you want a good and free society, then, you know, everyone has access to information, all the information's out there. You are going to get a few oddballs. You're going to get the fucking idiot communists. You're going to get the fucking idiot fascists. That is just a price you have to pay, which means that a free society will require maintenance as well. You know, it's basically freedom. I'm not, I don't think that, see, see if like, I actually do achieve my goal and I get a constitution, that that isn't my job over. I'm not just going to go, oh, that's nice, boys, then I spark a blunt and put my feet up for the rest of my life and go, my job's done. No, I'm, I'm going to need to keep defending the constitution. I'm going to need to say, no, that should exist. That needs to stay there. My children will have to do it. Their children will need to do it. It will constantly require maintenance. And because of all the information's out there, you're going to get Nazis and communists, which means everyone's going to need to challenge the Nazis and communists. And not, just, well, that, like, yeah. not just that, but you get, obviously, you get amendments to a constitution. And of course, I mean, the, the original uh, writers of the American Constitution wanted it renewed every, like, so often, every few years, which yeah. is impractical. But at least it needs, like you say, anything if, if can be if, need maintenance. If it's done through a vote by the people, then that's fine. Like, I don't want the government, like the state, to have any power. We can just change the, con you know, the Constitution at our will. That can fuck off. It should be the people that decide the changes that get made to the Constitution. Like, that's, so, uh, that's something that I would be quite militant on. Two-thirds of the states to ratify it before it can become an actual yeah. um, thing, which I think that's that's a check on the on power, which is, yeah. Which is, but it'd be interesting yeah. to see, because the problem you're going to have, though, with the Constitution is even getting a relatively simple piece of legislation through is really time-consuming. So they're getting yeah. the time of constitution through like it's easier when it's 20 blokes in a room in 1776 or whatever like that's yeah, yeah. modern democracies are very very slow and bureaucratic yeah yeah it fucking is yeah <laughs> but like this is i just think that i think if it could put to a vote right now should we have a constitution to basically prevent the state from interfering in your life but then the state also has a direct responsibility to uphold your rights and it will be done completely equally. And see the best way to make sure that rights and everything are applied equally. See how you're giving groups rights, you know, some people go, yeah, gay rights, trans rights, all this type of stuff as well. I think if you just totally remove that part and just go rights, human rights, no, none of this collective fucking shite, right? Just fucking well, human it's, rights. It's humanity, like, is, humanity is a collective. I, Ah, okay then, right. It's, yeah. a, it's, it's, it's literally a group that every single person is part of, right? But it's a case of well, all yes, that would matter is the human part. But, but like, the thing, the thing is as well... Well, sorry, technically that would already exist then if you want to broaden it out to every single person on the planet. But in order to give the human rights to a specific group within a geographic area, like the nation-state of Britain or whatever, yeah, that would inherently have to mean that you're not necessarily going to follow through for that for a Frenchman. Well, that's, that's the thing is as well. See, see, if I could apply it in France, I would. I would. I would I would probably encourage other people. I would encourage every country in the world. Like, I've, I always say to Americans all the time, cherish your fucking constitution. You have no idea how lucky you are. Like, I would say to other countries, like, if free societies, I think, are the best kind of societies, you should adopt this. But this is the thing. The way, the way it would work as well is, see, even if the way I would have it is if someone is on British soil, they have these rights, which basically means that even if an illegal immigrant jumps across the border for two seconds and jumps back over, see for those two seconds he was in this country, he was protected by that constitution. Like if someone is even in the country like illegally, it wouldn't be a case of, you know, you are a, you, you need to be a citizen to get these rights. It's not citizen rights, it's human rights. Even if you're in the country illegally, you are protected by this constitution because that's the way human rights work. You know, there shouldn't be. Well, you're, and you're, I, I, you're, now, you're departing from Sargon and his Starship Troopers fantasy land. I was just about to make that joke. Service <laughs> guarantees citizenship. <laughs> no, I mean, no, they're not. They're not citizen rights. They're, they're human rights like that. So as long as you are within our borders, then you have these rights. But if we could, if we could just totally make that make that constitution global and make the world free, 
then that that would be lovely. Dan Kilo, Dan Kilo confirmed globalist. So Free, I'm, a, I'm a freedom globalist. Borders should still exist, You're right? Ross Shill. <laughs> Borders should still exist. I'm a freedom globalist. Let's take freedom global. <laughs> Well, there's, there's there's your tagline. Let's make freedom global. Actually, I'm fine with that. Yeah, that's I'm, I'm down with that as a sentiment. Let's Absolutely. make, make you know, let's do a worldwide constitution where everyone is protected from interference from the nation states, and let's uh, let's let's make the third world a little bit more capitalist. Until I know I know you don't like that, but until we find a better system, uh, capitalism probably will develop into something else in the future. Hopefully, it's something more beneficial. But you know, well, just just nice. just just like I said about you know, uh, society requires maintenance, and you know, it's always something you should watch out for and protect. You know, you know, capitalism is the same. Well, I I have no doubt it will change into something because people like under feudalism, it seemed like that would never end. Like it seemed like too much of a monolith, too powerful to stop. But yeah, it stopped. And capitalism has only been around for like two hundred years, and feudalism was around for like a thousand fucking years. Well, feudalism. So, well, feudalism no Feudalism was a you see kings and queens. That was well. See, see how the whole feudalist system was like a thousand years. But see how the whole concept of fucking kings. That's pff, that shit. That's been that's been done, a man. <laughs> like fucking. That's that's been around for a while, man. But like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And well, indeed, and empires have been around since the start of human civilization. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Fucking basically, give us your shit. This is ours now. Yeah, I, well, I, would, I, would, I would say that's been around since we started walking up, right? <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's the thing. I think, look, to bring you back to a point I made earlier about you having, I think, too much faith in people, is that civilization is rather thin veil over the fucking hairless apes that we are. Oh, yeah. No, but we, we are beasts at the end of the day. You know, we still have, like, we, we even, you know, the pheromones of other people actually affect the way that we think, and we don't even fucking realise it, just because that yeah, shit is fucking in and out. From here, you dirty bastard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, but that's the thing is, like, we do have instincts, and instincts fucking they very often trump like a lot of your, your sensibilities as well. Like, even even the male libido was it was it Socrates that said that the male libido is like being chained to a madman. Yeah. That you can, <laughs> I just, yeah. <laughs> It's yeah, so that's true. that's the thing is like even in fact, despite what some people might think of him for the whole masturbation affair, he said Louis C.K. He says that when you come, it's almost like the Hulk turning back into Bruce Banner, and you're like, what, what just happened? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like basically, common sense suddenly comes back into your peripheral vision. Like that's um, that's quite a good description. But that's you're right. We are beasts. You know, our, our instincts often trump. Like a lot of the a lot of the ways that we act, that influences a lot of the ways we act. Like we were saying earlier, we greed. That's yeah. it's an instinct, as well. But how the fuck do you overcome human nature? That's the problem. I, well, I don't think I, I think it would be silly to try and overcome it. All you can do is curb the excesses. I think. Yeah. And try and build civilization around that, and hope that the brain eventually evolves into something a little more moral, um, <laughs> stable. Yeah. Level. Even so. And on that bombshell, it's two in the morning, so I'm going the fuck to bed. No worries, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna head off as well. But this was good, man. I enjoyed this. Yes, Are you gonna leave it up for a couple of hours so I can fucking I will I will I, 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 see just out of force a habit. Whenever I finish a stream, I just yeah. go in and delete it right away. And then I did it and just uh, yeah, I fucked up. I'll leave this one up though. So you no, can that's all right. Yeah, I just explain for it. Yeah, last time I came on and I was gonna sort of mirror it on my channel and then it was gone and he was like, No, nah, I just pulled it. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll keep it up this time, man. Oh, good man, good man. Well, you haven't got to keep it up forever, because I imagine this is probably not the most high quality of your content. <laughs> oh, no, I usually, whenever I do streams, I usually leave them up for like a week or so, and then I've got a third channel, which I archive all my streams on, so it'll go oh. on there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, this was fun. Okay. Um, I'll see you around, I suppose. No worries, man. Right. Catch you after, dude. Take care. See you, man. That was wholesome. That was actually really good. Just give me a wee second. Right, I, I understand that there were super chats, guys. I'm really, really sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read them all out now. Sorry, it's just I got, I got so fucking distracted with that conversation. Like that was, that was good. That was a good conversation.
Kev's good because Kev actually comes to the fucking table and has a chat. But yeah, I'll I'll power through these just now. Uh, Michael Jones, hey Kev, grower or show? Ah, fuck, I wish Kev was still here to answer that. Uh, as told by Anakin Skywalker, this should be interesting. Sorrow Sapien, if you're deplatformed, bring your own Uber. Liam Dunnett, do a mad lads on Jack Renton, guy from Orkney that gets stranded on an island and became the first white headhunter. Right, that sounds interesting. I'll look into that. The Social Spoon, what do you think of the NPC meme, my dude? I think it's fucking funny. Mr. Sands, big up Kevin Logan's cat, which has a her name. See, I feel bad now for leading these to the very end. This would have been quite funny to chat with Kevin. Fuck, sorry. Uh, Red Pill Dragon, what is this fun talking about? Uh, Dread the Bell, I want to hear Kevin say in his mocking voice, Ha ha, Kevin Big Gay, got him. Uh, the Buzz CJC, just tuned in. Has Kevin just been making up bullshit about Trump so far then? No, he did make points. Like I know I know that everybody rips on Kevin and all that type of stuff as well, but he does he does what fucking a lot of them don't do. He actually comes on streams to defend his arguments. So I know that everybody, you know, makes fun of him, calls him the potato and all this type of shit as well, but he, he nuts up. He does. He actually nuts up. Uh Jables Bigley, holy shit, a Scott and a potato. Uh, Brandon Cope, absolute NPC. <laughs> Zogberg, Kevin, Tommy focuses on the one demographic because the establishment were scared of being called racist and ignored the issue until the problem festered. That's true. That is true. Um, the Saturday Tech Channel with music and gaming, that's the hell of a channel name. Uh, Count Dankula, for a few months now, I've written an idea, UK codified constitution, and I think you'd find it interesting. Is there an email or any other means of sending you the constitution? My business email is contactdankula at gmail.com. And uh, whenever I say that out loud in stream, uh, I get tons of bullshit sent to my inbox. So, yeah. <clears throat> A lot of stuff gets filtered into spam as well. So if you've ever sent stuff to it and I've not replied, like, so much... People keep signing me up to fucking bullshit on it because they think they're funny, so tons of shit goes into spam. Uh, Jables Bigley, I'm using my copy of the US Constitution as fat material right now, as you should. Uh, Jack Long, PM Corbyn, vomits and conservative. Sorry, Sapien, I'm loyal to the Queen, not to the Parliament. I believe in a small, limited state and believe in hereditary monarchy. I'm a libertarian monarchist. That's not something I've looked into, actually. Uh, sort of sapien. Sometimes I feel like an NPC that has only just become a playable character, and I'm waiting for someone to log on as me. What should I do, Daddy Dank? Drink more. Uh, Law Spade, dude, I swear before you was a YouTube star, we talked for EVE Online. I talked to Freedom of Speech to you, the whole pug thing happened to you. Weird, bro. We understand it more now, yes? Yeah, I'm a bit of a better understanding, you could say. Uh, Jables Bigley, it sounds like you and I have some philosophy to go far, of go far to go with jokes. Bearing cab, potato on potato crime. Uh, Nathaniel Helston, is there any way to actually make you a count? I think I kind of need to marry into it, which sucks. Jables Bigley, capitalism provides growth, socialism provides sustenance. That is probably true. Azrael Streamer, just got caught up in the stream. Would like to hear your opinion on this. I believe Trump has the right idea, but he doesn't necessarily go about it the right way by political standards. But I agree with him. What do you think? I think there's certain things that Trump does that it's just a powder keg that people can twist into. He's racist, he's a bigot, he's this and all that. Like, see, for example, uh, the trans people in the army business. Basically, trans people were causing costing the army a fuck ton of money. Now, this is this is the thing is like I understand that if it's a severe amount in expenses for trans people to be in the army, then for the sake of saving money, I understand why he did it. However, if a trans person wants to fight and possibly give their life to defend their country and they've had that taken away from them over something that they can't help then fuck me that's a horrible situation i i have no idea what decision i would make i have no idea what decision i would make in that that's just it's really unfair but it's a horrible reality so fuck knows what decision i would have made like i, I get why he did what he did but at the same time a trans person's kind of had like the honour of fighting for their country taken away from them. It's complicated. That's a fucking complicated one. Uh, Chase Huckle, Dankula, I love your vids. Stay strong, you mad lad. Uh, Lyra, who's this gay boy you're talking to and why does he have his camera on with that hairline? That was probably me, Lyra, you cheeky bitch. Uh, Fenrir Hilverta, 
mega make earth great again. <laughs> I, I like that. Mega. I'm stealing that. I'm going to copyright that right now. Uh, Luke Medlar, Absolute Mad Lads episode on Gigi Allen. He is in the list. I have a list. Uh, Chris Rundle, funny how Kevin's semi-sensible when he's not up fist his bum. Uh, so whenever whenever you get Kevin into like a regular conversation, like he's chill. He's chill as fuck. But like, uh, yeah, that was good. That was actually pretty wholesome. That was very wholesome. Oh, there's a super chat I missed. As real streamer, thank you for sharing your opinion. But yeah. I, I enjoyed that chat. That was good. I might be doing another one tomorrow, which is going to have like me, Sinatra, uh, Rational Disconnect, and maybe Ranting Feminists, which may possibly be a little bit more heated. So yeah, probably will be heated. But yeah, let's go on chat. Cocktails and bow ties, your head is shiny. Thank you. Thank you, I try. I give it a good day. I bust out the Mr. Sheen before I come on stream. <laughs> what happened with the stream last night? Was that the drunk stream? Like, I didn't, I was passed out in my bed. I didn't know they did that stream, but they, just to be clear, they deleted the stream because I think they thought they would get into trouble as if, as if I wasn't going to fucking find out what they did as if as if i wasn't going to fucking find that out the cheeky the cheeky fucking bastards man but yeah tell your pug to stop ddosing jim <sighs> probably is buddha <laughs> get vape i should be vaping um i am i am going to uh I am going to make another attempt at stopping smoking. And I'm going to make it very, very public. So that if I get if I get caught smoking again, I can have all my how many subscribers am I at now? About like 340. So I can have 340,000 people shaming me for breaking again. I'm going to if I if I do try again, I'm going to make it very public. So that uh, so that I can be shamed by hundreds of thousands of people. If I smoke again, uh, I'm the man. Eleven 1, hundred run for office. I don't know if I want to. Uh, I've got a feeling it might be the only way to fucking change things, but it's not something that I want to do. I don't. I don't feel like I was made to lead. But yeah, I am uh, going to end the stream now. Because uh, I have chores to do, because I am an adult. But uh, thanks very much. Fuck it off. Fuck. Uh, just, just a name. Is Caligula going to be in the next Mad Lad episode? You all, you all keep fucking keep guessing what's in my list. Right. No more. I'm giving. I've keep giving away Mad Lads. I'm not answering any more Mad Lad questions. Right. But anyways, I'll talk to you later, guys. Thanks very much for coming. See you later.